Hello, I have an exciting video today uh, because I have some very special guests with me here in the library. Uh, they are excellent American bookstagrammers, a literary power couple, <laughs> and, and fans of book prizes. Uh, it's Chris and Bernie. Yay, Hi. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thank hello. you for joining me. Thanks for having us. Yes. Yeah. It's, so, it's so great to see the famous library. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite epic, everyone. It's high. It goes high. Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah, it's very rooms, high ceilings. <laughs> and all the books that I can't fit anywhere yeah. are just like lying on the floor there. Um, yeah, you're like, you're like Alice, you've like gone through the looking glass. We really <laughs> <laughs> so since I thought I would take this opportunity, um, since uh, Chris and Bernie are in London this week, uh, and we're all fans of book prizes, uh, I thought uh, we could make a video uh, where we discuss our all-time favorite book prize winners. Uh, but because uh, I like to do this geeky thing where um, we, uh, we've each picked four books, uh, but we don't know what each other is chosen and we've written them down on these colorful envelopes mm -hmm. and we're going to go through and reveal them one by one to uh, see uh, if we've read each other's choices um, if uh, we agree or disagree with each other's choices we could have a little drama um, or um, yeah or uh, I'm curious too like if I uh, have any of your choices on my bookshelves like maybe before we finish you I could I saw oh uh, okay Oh, I haven't looked. I might. Uh, I could. I could run around at the end and, <laughs> and go gather up all the choices, so that then we we could show them. I bet uh, you have all of mine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but before we launch into uh, all of that, uh, I just want to uh, give you guys an opportunity to uh, introduce yourselves and uh, say who you are and uh, and what book prizes you like to follow. Uh, and also in the description, I'll link to uh, both Chris and Bernie's uh, Instagram profiles. Um, so go. Uh, Follow them there. Um, they're really great bookstagrammers and uh, really smart, um, and are also really like fun and like cute in their posts. Um, they do a lot of <laughs> videos and like pictures together. I'm um, talking about books, um, which is yeah really lovely. So, who wants to start? And I'll go so first. Far? Okay. Hey everyone. I'm Bernie mm -hmm. at Bernie.Lombardi on Instagram, um, and this is my wonderful husband Chris uh, at Christopher Metz. Yeah, at Christopher Metz, and we've been married since uh, New Year's Eve of 2019. Yes. Wow. And we live in New York, where I'm from. He's from Tennessee. The South. And we love book prizes. That's yes, kind of like do. our thing on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I would say my favorites are the Booker and the National Book Award, the Pulitzer. I like the Women's Prize. Those, those, are, those are the ones I pay attention to. And the Nobel. Mm -hmm. I pay attention to who wins the Nobel. Mm-hmm. What I do Chris? all of those, but Chris more closely with the Women's Prize than Bernie. Mm. Um, and the Carol Shields Prize. Oh, yeah. Great. Love that one. And the National Book Critics Circle Award. Mm -hmm. which is oh, I a, follow that one, too. Which is a book critics award. Um, and I, I, love, I started following that one because I saw the lists coming out for it. And I was, like, very impressed with all these authors that I already loved, so... It's kind of what got me into uh, that they one. They have good tastes. So yes, yeah, I, I follow I them. Yes. <laughs> They're great. Chris also tries to read all of like the Time Top Ten books. Oh yeah, the New York Times Top mm -hmm. Five books. So he, uh, I love those. He overwhelms him, himself with I the do. list sometimes. <laughs> I do. He likes he likes the list. Actually, when when we first met, um, he would make lists of books and read them mm. in that order and would never stray from that order. That is I very would disciplined. Yes. <laughs> I would yeah. So he he is he comes from a place where he. Very structured. That's what he does, yes. Mm -hmm. he, he likes Very structure. disciplined. But I've kind of pulled yeah. him out of that a little yes. bit. Yeah. Now it's quiet. Because <laughs> I'm the complete opposite. I Like, if I'm too structured like that, I won't enjoy reading. No. <laughs> well, that's good. You obviously balance each other that yes. way then. Like, Definitely. Uh, oh, that's really lovely. And we should also say you're here in London this week because of the Booker Prize. Uh, and uh, then next week you're going to the National Book Awards ceremony, both of you, After right? party, yeah. yeah. After, After party. party, okay. Yes, yes, yes. That is very cool. Very yes, excited. we'll be dancing all night long. Mm -hmm. And it's very different from the Booker, from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. At the National um, Book Awards After Party, it gets quite wild. Yeah, it's a little, yeah. Wild, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a bit more English and uptight <laughs> at the Booker Prize at the, at the, at the end of the evening. Uh, they tried to have a dance, but <laughs> it, was, it was more just like one woman sort of dancing with a giant Booker statue <laughs> on her own. And, and really, oh, we should go join in, but oh, I don't know if yeah. I have the energy. <laughs> We're being bad gays, but like, yeah. not being the ones to not bring people fun. in. Bring the party. Oh, but, um, so yeah, you're just flying from one book prize to another. And, but that is so cool. And very exciting. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the results of yes. the National Book Awards mm -hmm. are. 
see if uh, Percival Everett gets his dues. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what we're hoping. Mm-hmm. That's what I think, Exciting. I think. So shall we start going through our choices? Uh, and mm-hmm. so we're going to uh, name the, the book we've chosen and the, the book prize that it won. And uh, then just, yeah, why we're so uh, passionate about it. Uh, so who wants to begin? Chris, why don't you start? Uh, I'll start. And this will reveal um, that my books are a little more current because this is the furthest one back. Um, so number one is Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Stroud. Yay. The Pulitzer winner of 2009. So mainly for the reason that this kick started my love of Lucy Barton and Olive Kitteridge. Um, I'm mainly a Lucy fan, but this is the one that kind of started it all um, with that obsession. I just love Olive as a character. She's so brutal, <laughs> but <laughs> loving in Doesn't her own hold way. Doesn't back in her opinions. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it was great. Um, it was one of the first books I read when I started um, dating Bernie, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I started. I was a my... big fan, and I got Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, you've read it. You've read it. I know I you both have read it. I saw it out it. there, so... It's good. Main representation. Yes. <laughs> the the state where I'm from. So, yeah, it's yeah. great to see. And uh, I forget, have you read Tell Me Everything yet? Yes. I, I have not. Yeah, so. I was going to bring it here, but switched it last minute. Have you? I have, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I read it aloud to my husband in its entirety, um, which was so oh, yes, fun. Because, yeah, I got to do like the voices for all the different characters. <laughs> Can, you so, Can you do one? Can you do one for us now? <laughs> do olives. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What are you talking about, Lucy? <laughs> and Lucy's like, oh, Bob, I'm so worried about the health of my plant. <laughs> that's that's, that's exactly how they are in my head. So like, exactly. body them. Yes, I love that. That's and then Bob true. is a bit more Eeyore. He's like, oh, Lucy, I don't know about how. <laughs> oh, I just Bob. feel down today. <laughs> Poor Bob, he does. Yeah. yeah. But- He's so sweet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. I knew that would be a popular one with both of you. Yeah, I love Olive Kitteridge. Yeah, um, so good. Yeah. yeah, I have a... I know people like her. And, like, I, I, I like I like people like her who come off really, really grouchy and, and are really, really grouchy, but who, like, you know deep down inside, like, have that, like, soft heart. heart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, really, I was really drawn mm-hmm. to her character when I first read that book, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go next? Yeah, you go sure. Next. Okay. <laughs> So no pressure. <laughs> this was really hard, like everything. Really. Yeah, really? I know. And, <laughs> and yeah, obviously, these are just like our choices today. I'm sure like yeah. next week we could come up with totally different choices. <laughs> I first, yeah, I first came up with a list of like 10 and now I've, I narrowed it down, you know, just last minute as we, right before we started filming. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with my first one is Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. Ooh which won the Pulitzer Prize in the mm-hmm. early 2000s. I don't remember exactly mm-hmm. which year, maybe like 2004 or five, something like that. Yeah, that. Um, so this is a book that I read when I was like 21 or something. Mm. Um, and I did not like it. I did you DNF it? No, I didn't DNF mm. it. I struggled through it. And I didn't like it just because I didn't really like get it. And the writing was a little challenging. And maybe it just, I wasn't the reader that I am today. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, I want to say like exactly 10 years later, I picked it up and reread it and absolutely loved it um I, re- I really fell for it um i like books that take very nuanced approaches to faith mm-hmm. um I-, I like that i mean i'm not like super religious at all but it's just something that i'm drawn to mm. um and i really i really liked um the older gentleman who is writing or is narrating the book i think he's like writing it right as a journal to his yeah. his young son mm-hmm. um and I also like how it explores kind of how even in adulthood, like you kind of like never stop growing and you're kind of flawed, you know, throughout, you know, the later years of your life, just as you are as a younger person. I, I really liked that. So, yeah, I actually remember you reading that at the cafe. Oh, yeah, you did? In Jersey City. Oh, I do. Yeah. Actually, I remember that too. Now. And then I read it after him and then he made his mom read it. Yeah. And then my mom. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Spread the love. Yeah. I love how, like, books are, like, tied to certain memories, too. It's yeah. just, like, you can remember where you read it and, like, mm-hmm. yeah, what was going on. Uh, but it's, like, so interesting you say that because uh, I read Gilead in my early 20s and, yeah, really struggled with it as well. And, uh, yeah, and I think I didn't get it. So, uh, but I've not returned to it. Um, so I know, yeah, I really <laughs> ought to. But I, I did read uh, Lila. Mm-hmm. Um, is that how you can, like, yep. yeah, Lila. Yep. Um, 
And I loved that uh, so much. Um, so it like made me realize like, oh, actually, I, I think I am a fan of Marilyn Robinson. Yes. I just need, I just like need to take my time and, and probably needed to be a bit more, I don't know, mature and maybe had like a bit more uh, experience, like kind of Absolutely. Under, like, world experience yeah. to like, yeah, really, um, yeah, get it in that way. But um, uh, yeah, so, uh, okay, yeah, you made me excited yeah, to, yeah, to no, return definitely. to it. That, the, the, the experience and that you've read Lila and really liked it, you're, you're going to like this better more because you you're familiar with the story and because you know there it's a series of four books yeah yeah and so yeah so i haven't read the second one uh, or the fourth one that's come out although i have read is that housekeeping is that the separate mm -hmm. that's her yeah that's her debut mm -hmm. yeah yeah and yeah i loved that as well i also um read that aloud to my husband and like yeah had such a great oh, time that. experiencing it together um yeah. and our second one won the women's prize oh yeah that's right yeah is that so Hong? maybe it will Hong? pop up here who knows <laughs> Yeah. We shall see. So my first choice uh, is going back, um, actually not that far, only to 2010, um, and it is uh, Blue Boy by Rakesh Satyal, mm -hmm. and it won uh, the Lambda uh, Literary Award um, for debut fiction, and it's slightly... Um, self interest in making this choice um, because I was a judge yeah, in the category oh! so on that, um, uh, on that say, year. Was that the year? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, I read this one. I can't remember like how many submissions there were. I think there were like around like 40 or so for um, this, this category. And um, it was me and uh, Dennis Cooper was a judge. We were like pretty much unanimous, like, like, Oh, this, this book should win. Um, so it's like a, a a uh, young uh, American boy of Indian heritage um, growing up in Cincinnati, I think, uh, one of those cities that I never been to and so I don't have too much association <laughs> with but he's just like growing up in a suburban neighborhood and um, he, he notices his like skin is starting to uh, or has like a bit of a, like a blue tint to it and uh, and uh, so he um, starts to believe that like he's a uh, reincarnation of Krishna and I mean it just follows um his coming of age story and it is so endearing and funny and uh moving and uh yeah and so I I just uh, absolutely loved it um have either of you read it I've never heard of it <laughs> okay cool but now I'm excited to read it yeah, but um great. also Rakesh Satyal um he's written another novel but um but he also like works uh in publishing now like I think pretty like high up in publishing mm -hmm. he's always like he like helped publish Tori Amos's new uh, or like memoir or book or something and there's like lots of pictures of them together and I was very jealous and um <laughs> yeah and um yeah and I, I didn't know him when I read this book or when I was judging the prize but like since um or just like uh only I've never met him in person but been in touch in social media and he's just like such a lovely person and like okay. so positive like I think at the um Lambda ceremony I think he like uh when he got up to give his speech um he he he's saying uh uh, part of your world from Little Mermaid. <laughs> it was like, it was so camp. <laughs> um, but, and, and yeah, really sweet. So, um, yeah, and it's just always, I don't know, it's just always nice when authors you like turn out to be like nice people. Like, well, isn't yeah. It? yeah, it's like, I'm, yeah, authors aren't required to be nice people, but um, as Bernie discovered at the Booker Prize <laughs> ceremony in an author remat, who I'm not going to say yeah, here, no, but, no, no, no. No, but, um, but tragic. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that, that does happen sometimes. Yeah. But um, yeah, so you just have to separate author from their work, don't you? Yeah. Yes. But, um, but yeah, I, I yeah love this. Um, yeah. Coming of age, beautiful story. Excited to read it. Awesome. Yeah. Mm. All right. Round two. Yeah. Same order. Yeah. Same order. Sure. Yeah, yeah, shall we? All right, my next one is Milkman by Anna oh. Burns. Booker 2018. <laughs> so this this was a very special prize because it was the first um, prize that Bernie and I read together as mm -hmm. a long list. Mm -hmm. um, which, did you even finish the long list? I did not. Mm -hmm. I still have like two or three left from oh. that year. Yeah. Yes, well, I, as you heard... I was I'm, still in grad school. I was still That's true. Okay, you're busy. Yeah. you're busy. Yeah. As you heard, I was very structured, so I did finish the long list. Um, yes, it was very special. Always. Book. Yeah. Teacher's hat. <laughs> yes. Um, it has one of my very favorite opening lines of any book ever, which I will see if I can remember it. It is the day that somebody McSomebody put a gun to my breast and called me a cat and threatened to shoot me was the day the milkman died. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know if that's actually right yet. I don't know if that's right. <laughs> Roughly. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so it follows middle sister um, uh, in Northern Ireland uh, through the Troubles. Um, and her name is middle sister, the, the main character. Um, she's um, so easy to fall in love with as she walks through um, her town reading books yeah, and becoming like interesting um, by reading books and getting catching the milkman's eye, um, which is not a good thing to be interesting during the troubles. Um, and we follow her, and it's it's gr- quite great. And it's I know one of your favorite books as well. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite books. I guess as I well. should just yeah. s- jump ahead and yeah, yeah. and say that I knew, it, I knew it would pop up. <laughs> Milkman uh, is also one of mine. <laughs> hey, oh, that's great for <laughs> similar reasons. <laughs> that it's like the first list that we read together, although I didn't finish it. Um, and it's, I feel like more than that, it's also like the first book that we like fell in fell love, in love together. with together. Like yeah. not just that it won that, that year it's, we, we fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think the, the, the thing that I would add to what Chris already said is that I really connected to middle sister in interesting ways. I don't know. Like th- there's sometimes characters that are just so different from you mm. that you connect with. Um, randomly um and one of the one of the small ways that i connected with her is that i love walking and reading i i walk and read through the park we oui. and yeah chris, and chris joins me a physical book yeah yes oh. we, we, walk, we, we no we used to walk around the track i'll walk yeah. down the sidewalk through the park yeah through the park i do it people stare <laughs> they people continue. this is a very good coordination <laughs> too, <'cause laughs> people this, falling down yeah. all the time. it's actually a lot easier than you would think yes. okay. you kind of like I don't know. It's almost like second nature. Like you yeah. in, cause I'm not a balanced person at all. He's very and, I, and, 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 and it, it just comes naturally. If you say the word balance, Bernie will fall down. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they do stop us in the, while we walk and people will be like, is this a joke? Yeah. We're like, no. And please, we're reading. Yeah. <laughs> You're interrupting. Yeah. It's a very good, good part of the book. Wow. I know we're interested. That's really yeah. impressive. And I, I remember reading it right before you and handing it to you and being like, I think this is it. Mm-hmm. I remember once, like, I tried to read while, um, not, like, running, but more, like, jogging on a treadmill, and, like, almost killed myself. <laughs> like, yeah. that, it was a bad a idea. Much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you got to find a good pace. Okay. Are mm. you a Milkman fan? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you hate all my favorite books. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I felt quite mixed about it when I read it. It's, uh, it's, it's... It's one of those books that I'd say I really admire aspects of it. And um, she seems like an absolutely lovely person. I love like the year after she won the prize. She gave such a moving and like beautiful speech. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. When they were presenting the next year's uh, winner. And um, and we did see her at this year's um, Booker Prize, but we weren't brave enough to go up and like say hello. Uh, but um, <laughs> but uh, I had but, already had my encounter with the other author and yeah, then was just nervous. Because it, it, it wasn't her. Yeah, it wasn't her. It wasn't her. <laughs> I also, um, we were just at the Booker Library at the Waterstones in Piccadilly mm-hmm. and they had a blurb on um, Anna Burns and how she was on government assistance when she was re- writing this book wow. which is wild yeah um, mm-hmm. and I'm sure her life immediately changed yeah. upon this book so she's really the salt of the earth yes but we interrupted Eric I'm Eric oh, sorry still- Telling us about uh no well yes, your thoughts. well I mean I <laughs> yeah so I, I just felt uh quite mixed about it and yeah it's it's one of those books I just kind of I uh, yeah, admire aspects of it rather than like wholeheartedly loving it, and um, yeah, or a book that I'm necessarily that eager to return. To. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I, I should. I mean, maybe it'd be like Gilead, and 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 I would like, and I would just like appreciate it so much more on a second reading, and you know, and I mean, that's like kind of a good thing I think like about the the Booker, and that that's almost like part of the qualification for like winning the prize that a book needs to like withstand multiple readings which yeah. the judges always do like reading it at least like three or four times and uh which uh yeah with some books it's that's just the case you just need to really sit with it and uh re-experience the story before um being able to see all the like details or the connections of it or whatever but but i'm going to talk more a bit about that in a couple of minutes oh. with another choice that i i talk about so okay. um it's your turn Okay. Oh, yeah, because you did with men as well. So my next choice is uh, Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders, which won the Booker Prize in 2017. The year before Milkman. Yes. This is just one of those uh, novels that I, I was like, I was so surprised and delighted and impressed 
by that uh, a kind of reading experience where you're you're like like wow I like I didn't know you could like do that in a novel and um was so uh in pressed by the inventiveness uh, of it and how he like mixes nonfiction and fiction um but also like tell this like wild surreal story of uh, all of these um oddball ghosts in a graveyard but also in an incredibly moving story about a father grieving for his son who happens to be the president and at like the center of american history and uh, and so i i was just completely like swept uh, away by it and and i think it was like the first year that like i'd ever like read a book and like immediately thought this is gonna win the booker prize and then and then like several months later um it, it did um but that's not like why i picked it it's, i'm not being smug it's like, <laughs> just that um, that, that I, I just like was so uh impressed by it and um and and yeah so it tells the story of of abraham lincoln who's um uh, young son died and uh, about him going to the graveyard and um, grieving for him but then there's also all these other strange ghosts there that have their own hang-ups and uh, weird issues um, that they're all uh, working through as they're um, like circling uh, around him uh, but then it's also it's this very specific point in uh, American history and um, you're kind of aware of that um, happening uh, on the the outside, but um, on the the inside, and in, in his like immediate experience, it's so tender and heartbreaking that um, he's he's lost his son. So, yeah, I just I, I love it, and and also to, like George Saunders is just such a cool person, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'd I'd it's um the I I'd tried reading a book of short stories by him like before this came out and um like really didn't get on with it um and so like wasn't expecting that much from this book too so i think it is like that just being totally like surprised and mm -hmm. overwhelmingly like in love with uh, a book that is like oh actually this is an author that um yeah is so incredible so mm -hmm. yeah, we both read it yep we agree we loved it too mm -hmm. okay good. um yeah so <laughs> no fears there um <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, one of our good friends dd at dd reads um she is obsessed with it as well and she um, likes to tell people um, a very fun story about it, that the audiobook is narrated by so many different people because yeah, every cast, ghost has it? a different voice mm -hmm. and every voice is a different cast member. And then fa famous people come Famous in, people right? come yeah. in and out. Also, mm -hmm. random people, they, I guess, went to the streets when they were recording and being like, can you record this line? Because there's many ghosts that have one line. So a lot of unknown people that were just on the street oh, that wow, day I didn't know that. are wow. in that audiobook. That's so, so cool. I didn't know that either. Dee <laughs> says that all the time. You need to listen, listen better. Uh, yeah, probably. Should. <laughs> she also doesn't. She like she's like done um, like reading groups with elderly people, right? Um, with this book. Yeah, yeah. She 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 loves it. So it, it can connect to many different generations. Yeah, mm. I, I I love this book. It's one that I really really loved while I was reading it, but I like don't remember enough to like talk about it. Yeah, right? yeah. But like. It stuck with me enough where I like forced Chris to read yeah. it, right? In right. Force, it was... forced, but like, yeah, yeah, you have to. Um, but it's interesting that this is like the book that he's so famous for because he's act like aside from that, he's most famous for his short stories, right? Like yeah. George Saunders. So this is his only novel, which is cool. Okay, my next one is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo, Yay. Booker winner of 2019. The real Booker winner. The real. <laughs> Booker winner. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I don't think we need to say as much as I love Margaret Atwood, but <laughs> yes. not that book. Um, <laughs> yes, love that. Love this one. Um, it was one of those books again. The next, so this was our second time reading through the long list. Again, I think I'm the only one who finished that long list. Mm -hmm. Um, the next year, but I remember reading that one and being like, oh, I think this is it. This is the one. Um, so it's um, many different characters. I think like twelve, twelve bit around twelve different characters um, on their way to the theater. Um, it's black voices, British, black British voices. Um, and we get viewpoints from all different kinds of people. We have um, immigrants who've lived here their whole life. We've had, we have non-binary people. We have very conservative people. So you get a whole very different ages. view. Mm -hmm. Yes, you get a whole viewpoint from so many different people. So that it makes it very easy to connect with because you'll find a character that you 100% are with. And you'll also find characters you do not connect with. Mm -hmm. So, and they're all kind of in the same location at the same time, going to the same spot. Um, and I fell in love with it. And it was an easy book to just give to so many people just to be like, I know you'll find something to love here. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did. I loved it so much. And I know you did. 
Yeah, I, I think what I, one of the things I loved most about it is that it felt like almost like an exercise in empathy because yeah. as you see these portraits of different characters, you see how they are misunderstanding each other mm -hmm. um, yeah. and uh, but then when you see that character from the inside it's a like very different perspective uh, so it, it just is a, this incredible experience of uh, of, of seeing um, different points of view and how nobody's really right but how we often make assumptions about each other yeah. and uh, and uh, can um, like overlook uh, aspects of each other's um, personality and uh, character and why people are acting uh, a certain way and um and yeah but obviously yeah people with uh, very different opinions as yeah. well and beliefs and um and how those can be great against each other and um and have create all these uh, misconnections with each other um so yeah i i loved it yeah as well yeah and i think it's important to note that even with all of these different characters nobody is the main storyline so yeah. it's like bernardine's not giving her viewpoint of who is she she would most connect with so like you said, like all of these different people are all miscommunicating and misunderstanding each other, but yet no one is the protagonist. They all are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I loved it too. Um, I was telling Eric at the ceremony that I was really disappointed because they were like this close to naming the Booker Trof Trophy Bernie after her. And I just oh, wow. That. <laughs> the Booker Trophy was called Bernie because I pretend it was named. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's not mm. his name, Dyrus. Yeah. I, 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 I actually, I've never read anything else by, by her yet, but I had a bunch of her books like from years and years ago from when I was in grad school that I just still haven't read and then this came out and I was like oh I think I have like own this author's books. I hadn't read anything else by her um either until a couple of months ago and I read Mr. Loverman mm, I want to read that. and fell so in love with it oh, it's nice. such a great book um so, uh, such a pleasurable story to read and like so funny but um but also really heartbreaking and uh yeah just incredible and uh and so there, there's a new um tv series adaptation that um mm. has um, just started or it's i think it's out now on, on bbc so i wanted to read it before yeah watching that but um but i can't watch it yet because i'm waiting for my husband to finish reading it and he's being slow about it so <laughs> <laughs> can you finish it so we can watch the series well, we should read it yeah, so we can watch it because that's one of the ones that i yeah. had i had that in blonde roots all right yeah yeah, yeah i want to get to that one as well it's my turn yeah. i guess okay so <laughs> this one's funny it's Why such it's because it's such a bro lit choice and <laughs> that's just not me <laughs> but, yeah. but it is such a so i went with going back in time a little bit i went with cormac mccarthy's the road oh Okay. Good. Um, I'm a huge Cormac McCarthy fan, and this was the first book that I read read by him, so it kind of, like, set off an obsession, um, and it's why I, I loved it so much. Um, and why we have now all of his books. Yes, but I've read a lot of them. <laughs> yes, I yeah. have a thing of, like, falling in love with an author and then buying all of Collecting their books, books and then yes. they sit there on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, re I've, read, I've read about half of his books, and yes, he has a lot. True. He has a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe even a, more than half of his novels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but this is just... I mean, if you've read Cormac McCarthy, you know that his his writing is like the style that's both dark and beautiful at the same time, and that's my favorite styles. Another book that I almost chose uh, was Toni Morrison's Beloved, which I love for a sim a, sim a similar reason. But I mm -hmm. <laughs> I read it so long ago that I didn't really remember enough that I felt right. like I could be confident about talking about it on here. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I love that, and I also just fell in love with again, like it it's the the story so dark. Um, the you know it, the right it, the atmosphere is such a such a vibe. Um, but the the relationship between the father and son in this book is just so raw and so beautiful that I just, I just, I just fell in love with it. And none of his books, uh, his other books that I've read are, are very much like this. Um, yeah. but they've all hit other spots that, that, so I've, I've enjoyed a lot of his other books. Um, I'm, mm. I, but it obviously it became an obsession, um, a Cormac McCarthy obsession. Um, but this remains my favorite. Important to note it won the Pulitzer. Yes, it won the Pulitzer. I also loved that one. Um, I actually read watched the movie when it first came out many years ago. I've never seen the movie. Mm. It's very good. Yeah, yeah, it's well done. Um, and then Bernie became obsessed, so then, again, shoves it in my face. Which <laughs> I, I don't mind, actually. It's very nice. I do that more than he does. Yeah. Because he's more... 
willing to read what I shove in his face. Yeah, <laughs> he is not. <laughs> so rude. More discerning. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, the relationship between father son was was quite beautiful and, yeah. and very, it's very um, sad and epic book, but it's got a lot of highs. Or, sorry, a lot of lows, not many highs. So. And I think what's annoying. so, like, incredible is, like, how he creates that relationship with, like, such sparse and, like, minimal yeah. dialogue. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> they really don't say very much, but, um, mm-hmm. and it's, like, ends the repetition of certain words that they, they say as well that just makes it, like, so tender and beautiful, um, their connection with each other, um, but also, yeah, obviously the context in Europe, like, get really worried for them. <laughs> it's really, it's um, so there are some really terrifying points. Yes. Oh, you know, the, yeah. The I cried. Yeah, I forgot cried. I cried. I rarely cried. Oh. I rarely cried, but I teared Actual up. Actual tears. I, yes. I, it wasn't like, you know, like, yeah. real <laughs> tears, but I, but I had like, you know, a droplet, like on the mm-hmm. side. I, we were on the subway. Yeah, I remember. Um, and I, yeah. I, did, I wasn't going to say it because I didn't know if you didn't say that because <laughs> you didn't want to. <laughs> no, I forgot. Because okay. there review. are very few books that have made me cry. Yes. I was sitting across from you on the subway and I was like, Something's happening. <laughs> just quietly hand over a tissue. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. He's just having a reading moment. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's great. Okay, yeah, very good. So you liked that one? I did. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I loved it. Okay. Although it's still the only Cormac McCarthy ever. Oh, really? So I know. Yeah, I yeah. have a Same. whole world. In some of the stuff is dark. <laughs> Some, yeah. some of the topics, yeah. I've uh, yeah, heard how violent and yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, disturbing his books can be. Mm-hmm. So my next choice uh, is Washington Black by S.E. Edition, oh. which won the Giller Prize in 2018 yes. Yes. when it was also shortlisted for the Booker Prize but did not win because Anna Burns. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is, this, this is why. <laughs> this is why. So I, I was rooting for this to, to win the Booker that year. So, I mean, maybe that's, yeah, partly why I have this little, like, Thing with yes. like Milkman too of like oh but she took I mean I'm, I'm so happy for Anna Burns because yeah obviously it's been um, fantastic uh, for both like her personally and um, yeah and uh, but uh, but also I just love this book so much I'm um, such a great like a really thrilling adventure story but um such uh uh, like moving story uh, about like personal transformation and hope and uh but also uh yeah the uh, difficulty of even if you like rise out of um the uh, challenging circumstances that you're born into um then uh yeah trying to survive in the world and be taken seriously and um so it's it's about a boy that's born into slavery but has a very scientific mind and uh great artistic abilities and uh and he uh meets a scientist um who kind of takes him on as an assistant and uh and takes him um around the world on different scientific expeditions but then they um they uh run into some conflicts with each other and uh yeah and with um the um social circumstances of the time and uh yeah, and I, I, and I just, I just love it so much, and uh, uh, yeah, and there's, there's like a particular scene in it where um, he goes uh, kind of like diving underwater that I just think about so much, and it's so vivid in my mind because um, it's so like beautiful how she describes that experience, like both the uh, environment but also this like sense of. Um, liberation that he feels in this space um, separate from the, the wider world um, where um, he can just like be himself like underwater um, in this way and uh, I just think it's such a beautiful moment and um, once when I was like getting my book signed by Essie and Tujin, I, I like asked her I was like so did you go diving to like, research that experience she's like nope never been underwater <laughs> like wow so you just imagined that and it, it was so, um, so cool. felt so vivid and real um yeah I so um so yeah um also yeah great to have a little shout out for a Canadian book prize a Giller prize and, yeah. Um, yes. yeah have you have you read her other book that it was also shortlisted for the booker and won the Giller I haven't actually no yeah so I mean, yeah. Um, it's it's funny because it up a couple times, but I've just never yeah yeah we have a copy, but we haven't spine. we haven't read it. But um, it's funny because we were, um, we said we the the year the milkman won um, milkman won was the year that we had started like reading prize lists. But it's also when I started reading or watching uh, BookTube, and your your channel is one of the first ones I watched. So I actually remember your obsession. <laughs> yeah. with oh, this oh, yeah. <laughs> so you started talking That's about so it, and I was like, I've heard this before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I love that that connection that that came up here. Oh, uh, yeah. oh that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, so you both read it, and mm-hmm. yeah, 
Yes. Yeah, um, I did not love it, but <laughs> but um, but um, I didn't. I didn't not. I know. No, I did. I didn't. I didn't not like it. It's just it's the, the, that type of narratives. Not not like what it's about, but I guess like the style of book is just not like one that I'm typically drawn to. Mm -hmm. Like I would associate it with like Demon Copperhead or not Demon Copperhead. Demon, um, what's the what's her name? Barbara King's solver book. Yeah, Demon, Demon Copperhead. De Copperhead. Yeah, Demon Copperhead. Right. Oh, it is Demon Copperhead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I know. Saying, I always get confused. I was saying Demon <laughs> Copperhead and thinking Demon Copperfield in my head as I said it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I would I would say like those are like a similar style and like. Well, I enjoy, mm. like, I like them. I, I'm never, like, obsessed with that style. Like, the longer, epic kind of narratives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I was obsessed with Demon Copperhead. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah. I it's liked it. I liked I, it. Yeah. I liked it, but yeah. I mean, you liked both of them. I like both of them, yeah. yeah. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. That's totally fine if you don't. So. <laughs> don't be scared about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. okay. You like Good. it, though. Yeah. You like you yeah. like Washington Black a lot, yeah. I don't remember much about it. It just feels so long ago that I read it. I remember enjoying his journey mm -hmm. um, and being very scared for him. Um, those are my, like, main takeaways. Okay. But, but yeah, I did enjoy it. Great. <laughs> so my last one which was also on the 2018 shortlist oh yeah it was and this is now a so that's a very good shortlist for everybody uh, who has yeah. not read that 2018 um, Booker Prize shortlist mm. this did not win that year but um, it won something else um, so it is The Overstory uh, by Richard Powers um, won the Pulitzer in 2019 um, so again this was a very special year for us um, reading it, um, and I didn't know that I loved trees as much as I do, <laughs> but now I'm obsessed with trees, and I want to hug all the trees and whisper <laughs> sweet nothings to them. But the overstory follows this cast of characters and and trees. We get trees' perspective as well as they kind of navigate um, their love of the earth and each other, and we see them kind of experience who they are meant to be and become who they they think they should be um so it's quite special following their journey the, which all led them to find their own love of the earth and to go about trying to save it in their own way whether that be good or bad um but they all had some connection to it um and i thought mm -hmm. it was so beautiful um and i didn't i remember picking it up and reading what it was about and being like this seems silly um but it was not it was anything but um, it, was, it was very moving, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is, again, another one of those, like, epic journeys that you don't connect with as much. But I like this one. Okay. I like mm -hmm. this one a lot. Um, this one, um, because I like, I was drawn to the trees, right? Mm -hmm. I was drawn to the ideas um, uh, around the trees that he explored. Um, and it, I feel like it was the, I'm not a science person. I don't typically enjoy science-y topics. I don't, I don't really read science fiction or... I don't know. I did science was my worst subject in school. <laughs> um, but this is the first book like that kind of like had to do with science that I, that I really enjoyed. And I was like, Oh, maybe I can like, you know, fiction that brings science into it in a certain way. And mm -hmm. I liked Orbital, which is kind of science. I mean, yeah. it's spacey, you know, um, yeah. which I liked. Um, yeah. so, I, so, and, and for that reason, I really, I, I enjoyed it and, and I did like it. So okay. yeah, I liked it. I think it was my third favorite on the shortlist. Okay. Year. Yeah. I think I just liked how kind of optimistic it was while also being mm. very almost distrustful of what the future holds. Mm. However, it still gave like this glimmer of hope, but was very real. So I don't know. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Richard Powers is great at doing that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so, like, yeah. it's in yeah, a lot of his books. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of feeling of hope, but also, yeah, uh, lots of wariness about yeah. <laughs> what's happening and going to happen in For sure. uh, the, the future um, yeah totally uh, i think with with uh over a story it it like uh i had a slight issue in that uh, where which can happen in books where there are lots of characters that i liked some of the characters mm. narratives more than yeah. others and so i would get um slightly impatient at certain points where i was like oh can you go back to that character <laughs> I'd, I'd rather like hear more about them but then i like, had to get through um some of the er other characters before seeing um, them come more together uh and so uh yeah i kind of and felt the same way uh, about his most recent novel like playground as well which 
kind of had the same thing of like lots of different characters and uh and yeah I kind of connected with some more than others um which is why I I think I love so much bewilderment mm. um because that's more just like very uh right. like focused on yeah. father and son um relationship and and grief over um the missing wife and mother but I I think he's great writer um really like impassioned and uh moving and, and I remember uh when uh yeah, at the um, Booker Prize readings, um, like he, he's such a good speaker, like mm. such an inspiring speaker. Um, it's so wonderful hearing him uh, talk about um, books and like the importance of literature and um, and why, um, yeah, like reading isn't um, like closing the world out, but like opening yourself up to it. And um, yeah, and I, I uh, yeah, think he's yeah another just like really like cool guy yeah, yeah for sure yeah. <laughs> living up in the mountains in the yeah, right. Ad adirondacks or wherever he lives mm -hmm. <laughs> i love that Doing okay, right. okay my last one is tomb of sand oh. by Geetam jolly shree and translated by daisy rockwell and it won the international booker prize i want to say two or three three years ago yeah i think three, three years yeah. ago yeah yeah um, okay, so this was a book that I just felt like was very special for me. The, the biggest thing that this book did for me is that it kind of introduced, or I don't know about introduced me, but like assured me that there are other ways in the world to sto tell a story. Um, and it just really, really captivated me. I think that's something that can happen sometimes in the West or like in the US um, specifically, which kind of like dominates the, you know, the publishing industry. A lot of stories and styles can kind of like be similar and it gets kind of like washed out a bit, you know, like every every author, you know, there's a thing that every author went to the University of Iowa <laughs> writer's workshop. There's that, you know, that whole, like, and, and so there's just like, I don't know. So then to get something that is just so drastically different um, was, I don't know, m mind boggling for me. I just, I, I just really, really loved it. And then just like the writing and the, the translation of the writing was just so beautiful. I would, I would, um, this, this is not, you know, I'm, I'm on bookstagram. I'm not a, a booktuber. So I, I'm, I don't do a lot of videos, but when I was reading this, I felt like the urge to um, record myself just like, reading it out loud and posting it to my stories just oh. because I was just like so <laughs> obsessed with the language. Um, I like how it captured a culture in such a, such a vivid and bright, it was so bright. Like the, just like the writing felt so bright. Um, and, and yeah, and, and it, it's in ways that are just so different from like the cultures that, you know, I'm a part of, but also similar, like, like, like I felt like, parts of my cultures like could be could be captured in a similar way to highlight things in a similar way but obviously that are that are different and just I really like that I don't know I'm, I'm rambling but I but I really I really I really I really really love this book it also like it was on a really really strong um short list that year um and I was just kind of like obsessed with the prize that year hmm. I haven't read it but <laughs> You did, I forgot about he that. He didn't read the, oh, the story. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't read it out loud to his stories, but many times you were you read it to me. That's true. And you're like, listen to this. <laughs> um, and I, I'm oh. sure I enjoyed it yeah. from what... Well, and, and it's a thick book, but the sh chapters are very short. Yeah. So, like, you can just, yeah. like, re yes. read a chapter out loud and, you know, feel, kind of, like, get a sense of how it feels. I will read it. Yeah, you will. Well, I know you will. Yes. I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and... I found it so interesting with that book that um, the the original edition in the original language, uh, the the size of that book is like that, but then <laughs> the translation is like that. Yeah. So I, I I still never found out like what the answer yeah. was there. Did Daisy Rockwell just like <laughs> go wild and like actually I'm gonna add you know a hundred pages here yeah. to <laughs> this this section or That's or wild. if like if. I, I I don't know. Yeah, why why there would be such? A thing there is a lot of white space, between... you know, because of the short yeah, chapters. That's true, it'll that... be like mm. white space, start of a chapter, end of a chapter, white mm. space, right? So there's a lot. There's mm. a lot of white space. Yeah, maybe there's a lot of um, cultural references that wouldn't translate directly, so she had to elaborate on what it meant. Yeah, mm. maybe that too. Yeah, and also I think it's so <laughs> cool in that story how the the main character of it uh, she doesn't speak for like 70 or 80 pages <laughs> of, of the book or, or like 
kind of or you don't get like her thoughts or anything it's just like her family buzzing around her um and then uh she but she's such a presence and then uh and then you like follow her on this this journey and uh yeah <laughs> um i i, I just yeah, thought that was like so unique and uh, and a really like striking thing about the book, and I did really love um parts of of the book, but um but also yeah, I think there was probably a lot about it that I didn't get, and and because it's like such a, a long book that um yeah, I felt like uh, there were like some sections that like dragged a little bit for mm -hmm. me, but um but then I think that um yeah, if I like went back and reread it and um. Uh, yeah, I would, but but also um a part of the reason why I really like enjoyed it and I think like connected with it because it like reminded me so much of Ali Smith's writing and um mm -hmm. and like the the subject matter that like she tackles too of like um she she's always writing against people um uh, being uh, defined as like just one thing mm -hmm. and our like identities are so much more expensive and complicated um than than that and uh, I feel like that was like something that. Um, she was like exploring so much in the book and kind of like breaking down borders um, between people and countries and communities and faiths and mm -hmm. um, and yeah and trying to uh, open things up in in this way but yeah um, yeah a great book I'm trying to remember what else was shortlisted um, the Sept Septology the third oh book, yeah uh, mm -hmm. Curse Bunny Elena knows oh yeah Elena knows yeah I think that was one I was really I really loved that one too yeah, yeah. I really that was a hard year because I loved so many of the books but mm -hmm. two of Sam obviously like really touched me in, yeah. in a way that I clearly it was my clear favorite but I did love those a bunch of those books last but not least the grand finale so my last choice, very uh, recent one, which is uh, Solenoid by uh -huh. Marcia Kautarescu, okay. uh, which uh, won uh, just this year uh, the Dublin Literary Award. And uh, this is another very big um, book, mm -hmm. uh, quite um, challenging one in some ways, but, uh, but I think one of the most incredible reading experiences that I've ever had and I, I fell in love with it and uh, it's really wild uh, the the story um, I mean, basically is following a man who's a teacher who's keeping a notebook of uh, all of his thoughts and uh, his his memories and um, and it's kind of it's realistic in some parts and that it's like uh, in uh, dealing with uh, like Romania's uh, past with uh, communism but um but also it gets really surreal and strange because like around the city there are these strange portals to like different kinds of experience it's like it's very difficult to like describe but um but it all kind of comes together and just like on a sentence level the um the the amount uh that the the author um layers into this and uh, also I should say it's translated by Sean Carter um that uh is yeah, and I, I found myself, um, even though it was such like a long novel, I was like stopped at various points and was like contemplating everything that he was saying in these, um, because the, the sentences are so like rich and filled with like so much meaning and there's um, so much to uh, un unpack in them. And, uh, and so it took me like multiple weeks to um, read this book, but I thought it was so worth it and um, uh, really uh, amazing story and uh and and filled with so many ideas to um that i really want to um take my time with it and uh take it all in and uh, and also i will say now that uh a little uh tip and prediction that uh, mm. i think this is going to win the international booker prize in 2025 mm. because uh so it came out in uh, america um a couple of years ago but it's only just been published in the uk by uk press this past summer which makes it eligible for mm -hmm. next year's international booker prize so what's the original language uh yeah. romanian yeah uh, i actually knew, have it yeah i actually knew that and i'm excited because it'll make me read it yeah uh, because it's <laughs> yes, a book that i really really want to read Both but it's just so long um and i actually read i read like 20 pages of it and there's a lot of text on the page too so it's probably like you know like yeah, 30 pages in. in another book um mm. and i and i loved it and mm -hmm. I, I loved every part okay. of it i've actually been to romania twice oh, wow. and so like i've i've um it, it, it really it it does a good sense a good job at um creating a sense of yeah, place um yeah. yeah um that i really loved it just it was like i think i like 
picked it up to read like 20 pages like right before Christmas or something and then I just was like <laughs> it's not I, very Christmas yeah I was just like <laughs> and, I, and I really 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 enjoyed it but I just it, I wasn't in the mood for a big book and so mm -hmm. I, I paused it and then never picked it up but I, I did know about the international booker that it's eligible and I am excited and I'm hoping that it forces me to read it yes especially <laughs> yeah. now I hope to do yeah, yeah with because... your high praise I mean, it is, yeah, I mean, we're, like, coming up for Christmas again. <laughs> it, it is quite, like, a melancholy book. Um, it's very, like, contemplative and um, witty. But it's also very funny. There's, um, like, lots of his, like, turn of, turns of phrase and, like, ways of uh, describing things are, um, yeah, so I was, I was frequently laughing as well um, as, like, feeling all angsty and, like, <laughs> and, 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 like existential. But, like, but also, um, yeah, it's just so such an incredibly uh, rich narrative and uh, and and I think his writing is incredible I've still not read anything else by him but I'm really eager to and uh, yeah and I just thought it was like so crazy that it, it like hadn't been wasn't picked up by any like big yeah. publishers here and it's still I think it's published by Pushkin Press who mm -hmm. like aren't that big and so mm -hmm. like um yeah and so but I think yeah he's just like I mean, it's, well, I can understand it's like not a very, uh, it might be difficult to like sell to the public <laughs> with everything <laughs> I've been describing, but, um, and uh, so like, yeah, for a wide readership, but, but also for that reason, I think it's, yeah, likely for yeah, prize. So. Uh, Doesn't it question. open with lice? Something about lice? Uh, yeah, I think it does, doesn't it? And, um, talk about, like, a na navel-gazing book, like, literally, like, he's, like, looking at his yeah, navel and, like, yeah. pulling something out of his Yes, navel. I remember that. Yeah, the... And I love those yeah, kind of books. Like, that's something that I love. <laughs> right. So I was really, I was, like I said, I was really drawn to it. <laughs> Pushkin Press, um, is right by our hotel. Is it? Yeah, we pass it every oh, day. Yeah. Cool. cool. So I'll give him a right. thumbs up on our way back. Yeah, mm -hmm. like shout in the window. Guys. Make sure to submit this yeah. for the International Booker Prize next year. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, so those are our choices. But I mean, like I said, I'm sure, yeah, There's there so are lots other, of other books yeah. that what, we could have picked. Yeah. What, are some, what are some that you like contemplated? You don't have to talk about them, just like say, say the names. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'll, I'll go, I'll go. I thought, yeah, of, yeah. I thought of like The Promise uh, by Damon Galgo. Okay. I thought mm. of that one. I thought mm. about. Um, like I said, beloved. Same. Um, I considered uh, the brief wondrous life of Oscar. Wow. I considered Lonesome Dove. Oh, I considered Olive Kitteridge. Oh, Lonesome Dove would have been a good yeah. one. Yeah. I've still never read Lonesome Dove. Oh, oh, you would love it. I know. You would love Everybody it. Everybody says that. And like, oh, <laughs> you would you love should it. Get to it. That's it's quite long. Very again, good. Isn't it? Like, it, yeah, it, it is it, long, but it's it's, it's, quick, it's a quick read. It's a quick okay. read. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's still long, so it's not like quick, quick, but like. But it's not like. It's not a challenging. Yeah, it's not challenging. Yeah. And you would love the miniseries, watching yeah. the miniseries after, because there's oh, so many okay. famous people in it. Oh, right? I didn't know there was yeah. a... Okay. Yeah. Huh. On HBO, I think. Okay, I'll read Lonesome Dad if you read Solo Night. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Shake on it. There. You all seen. <laughs> Your witnesses. <laughs> Wait, let's add to the list. Reread Gilead. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Do we stop recording? I'll get right on yeah. <laughs> reading all of these books. Uh, but um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, let us know. Uh, have you read any of these books? Um, do you agree with these choices? Do you have any other prize winners that uh, you want to shout out? Um, let us know in the, the comments. Uh, yeah, that'd be really great to hear about. And I'm looking forward to hearing everybody else's top mm -hmm. choices mm, of uh, book prize winners. Um, and Or if you want to talk about any particular book prizes that we haven't discussed or mm -hmm. mentioned, um, then yeah, I always like finding out about new ones. If it just feels like there's always like some obscure book prize <laughs> I've never heard <laughs> yep. of that. It's like, yeah, but I, yeah. I'll happily add it to the realized. list. Mm. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, thanks and for having us. And thanks everyone for, for watching. And again, yeah, uh, links to their... Uh, profiles their instagram uh, accounts yeah are below so so yeah go follow them and uh but yeah happy reading and bye everyone bye, bye. <laughs>